Welcome back to my A through Z playthrough for Heroes of the Storm. Today we have landed upon Muradin, who has been a stalwart, strong tank uh, throughout the game. And I know it says that he's easy. Now, this was the same thing for his previous version. I could never seem to get a grasp on how to properly play the previous iteration of Muradin. I just seem to always struggle, and I would see other people play Muradin, and he would just be amazing. But I couldn't never seem to get a grasp on it. Well, fortunately, a talent rework happened very recently for Muradin, which took a couple of uh, talents here and there and put them into his base kits, such as his Stormbolt, especially. A quest where if you hit 25 of them, uh, you can be able to unlock the two talents uh one was pierce an additional target plus they have a, now a built-in battle momentum into that as well uh not just for storm bolt but they also changed his avatar level 20 talent where you actually can get a battle momentum for both thunderclap and dwarf toss now uh there's a pretty cool hybrid build i've come up with uh where you can be able to get a decent amount of damage while also still very tanky for your team if you need to be um, I still say you should not go for Haymaker if you are a solo warrior Muradin, but I will say that they did, I think, yeah, instantly gain one charge, so if you need that and you're a multi-warrior comp, maybe, but I still think Avatar is really good, especially the fact that it now gives you 20 armor and a battle momentum for your dwarf toss, which is just really good especially with the upgrade talents uh let's take a look at the new recently reworked muradin in action and show you guys why i think right now he is once again one of the top warriors in the game Kaboom, all right ladies and gentlemen we find ourselves on the infernal shrine the friendly team, Muradin, Ragnaros, Anubarak, Abathur, and Tracer versus Diablo, Kelfuzad, Lunara, Medivh, and Alarak. Uh, let's see. Begin I'm going to be going with Third Wind, which is going to increase the health restoration of my trait. Um, for a lot more. <laughs> let's put it that way. Second Wind, yeah, restores health when... Nine damage for four seconds. When below it, it heals for even more. And the fact that we don't have a healer except for Abathur, if he goes healing hat build, is uh makes this even more important and critical. I oh, I missed my cue there. Gotta be very careful. Ah. Oh. Good protection there by that uh, Medivh, and I'm dead. I jumped in to help the teammate, and I died. They just were all over us there, and we are losing this fight right off the bat. Oh, man. Of course, in the last video, you guys saw me completely suck as Medivh, and now you're probably going to see this other Medivh player just play incredibly well, knowing my own luck. Can we finish this Kel'Thuzad off? Yes, we do! Very nice, Anubarak. So we do have two warriors. It's myself and Anubarak, but I still feel like I would want to do Avatar rather than a uh, haymaker. Haymaker just feels weird and unnatural to me. I'm, I've always preferred Avatar. Of course, hiding in the bushes and such is completely pointless when they have a Medivh. Now our Tracer, she's in trouble. Ah, oh, I missed my cue against that Medivh. That hurts. Oh, no! Oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. 
Alright, at level 4, I'm going to be going with Thunderburn, where it's going to go off a second time for half the damage if I use it against an enemy hero. Unfortunately, it looks like we have one of those Lunara opponents that is going to be constantly uh, attack-stepping. A good Lunara player, in other words, which is so annoying to go against. And of course, you guys also saw me do really badly uh, as Lunara myself. There, we got my first uh, stack there. Not my first, my third, I guess, I could say. Fortunately, I'm also slowed by the Lunara, so I couldn't be able to get in there and help, but fortunately, my teammates were able to get in there and finish her off. I think I did notice that my Tracer and Abathur teammates are like really high level, so that's good to know. Go ahead and put there. You can see it goes off a second time because Diablo was right there when I used it. He is so low, but all my stuff is on cooldown. Let me go ahead and go over here. Sippy Cup to get back some more mana. I obviously don't have to worry about health when I'm Muradin, but I do have to worry about mana. Go. Let's see how I do here. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, at level 7, we are going to go with Give him the Oxen. Right now, I am being revealed and slowed because of the Lunara poison, unfortunately. So what this is going to do is every time I attack someone that has been stunned and such, I will be able to do extra crit damage to them. And I thought she was going to keep going and I completely messed that up. My stuff's on cooldown. One second I can use my jump. There we go. And now I can take a moment to heal back up and then go right back in. You see that extra healing that I'm doing right now? They took a moment to go ahead and get that camp. Unfortunately, I again missed my Q on that Kel'Thuzad. I'm doing pretty poorly on that right now. I want to jump in and get that Kel'Thuzad, but I know if I do, like, the Diablo and such are going to be right there. And I did hit the Kel'Thuzad there. We do are in a position. Oh, I got rooted. That Kel'Thuzad rooted me there. I couldn't do anything about that in terms of being able to jump out of there. Here's what our Abathur is doing. He's going mind build instead of hat build. Well, that's just lovely. And our Tracer lost her untouchable stacks. Got the Punisher. Heroes, an arcane Punisher comes for you. Well, we are ahead in XP because of our Abathur, so that's good. Come on. There we go. Careful, Rag. Careful. Oh, no. All right, I stunned him to try and help my Rag get, have an opportunity to get out of there. Doing crit damage, but unfortunately wasn't enough. go got another stack for my sledge my sledge my storm bolts my Q unfortunately our tracer was not really able to get out of there completely mistimed that the enemy team now does have their ults and we do not so that's a problem I'm gonna go ahead and do that put the stun there on the Kel'Thuzad. Unfortunately, I am now getting burst down by the Kel'Thuzad. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of there and take a moment to heal up. It kicks in, and look at that healing. Look at that healing. I'm gonna go with Avatar to try and make myself more tanky for these fights with all the damage that I am encountering right now. And our Tracer just went down there. Holy moly, my enemy team came down and 
<laughs> Killed three of the enemy team and I wasn't even aware of that and went over to help out. But look at my health. I'm already back to full health. Murden feels great to play without a healer. You don't have a healer to heal yourself? It's okay. Just get out of the fight. Take a few seconds to avoid damage and you'll heal right back up. Muradin, for the longest time, was without question one of the best warriors in the game. Uh, one of the things that they changed about him that made him so... That they took away from him that made him so good... That some people thought this was going to make Muradin unplayable... Was he used to have a stun on every auto attack in his avatar ult. Now just think about that for a second. Every auto attack he could... with For his avatar ult, he could be able to apply a stun. It wasn't a long stun... It was like, I don't know, 0.25 seconds or something, but it was still a stun. I see flame over there. Hello, Diablo. And because I have Abathur here, I was able to finish him off with the help of my Abathur teammate. And look at that crit damage that I am doing to this Alarak. Holy moly. Gonna pop Avatar here. Gonna go ahead and take Bronzebeard Rage at level 13. And just like that, we also killed the Alar the uh, Kel'Thuzad. I can't get to the Lunara, but that is okay. Now that I have Bronzebeard Rage, I'll be able to do more passive damage around me, which is gonna be great for helping with his lane clear. But what's also great about this new version of Burning Rage for Muradin... Uh, deal 32 damage per second to nearby enemies. Basic attacks against a hero that is rooted, stunned, or slowed. Increase the damage by 100% for 3 seconds. Combine that with give him the axe. That's a lot of extra crit damage. Do you see what I'm talking about in terms of his survivability along with the damage that he can do? Oh, so good. I, looks like my team needs me. I'm going to head up to the middle lane while Abathur pushes the bottom lane there. I do not have Avatar ready to go. I did finish off my Stormbolt quest there against the uh, Kel'Thuzad. Oh, lag. All that crit damage I'm doing right now. Oh, I did kill the Diablo, but I was pushed over. The cannons got me, and Alarak also silenced me. Ugh. I will say I'm really glad Power of our Abathur, he didn't go hat build and he's making himself feel impactful. I, met, I made a mistake. I did not realize that it wasn't my quest that was fulfilled. I thought it was, but I think it was uh, Kel'Thuzad's quest. I'm 16 stacks, so I'm almost there. We are currently losing the objective, but... Uh, Gonna make my way back over there now. So I may not be doing a lot of damage, but the fact that I can be able to have this health sustain along with that extra crit damage at times, just, oh, so good. And especially with comps that are able to utilize uh, passive uh, crowd control. Look at that. Look at that. Gonna go, I'm actually going to be going with Dwarf Launch here to increase the range to be able to... Woo! Look at that. That stun there on that Kel'Thuzad. Ugh! And that kill on the Diablo. Look at that. And I'm going to jump back in here to try and help my team work on getting this objective. You see what I'm talking about? I'm only one sec away because my Q did kill the Kel'Thuzad. So that counted as three stacks. So if you're using this for a killing blow, you're going to be able to get uh, your quest done very fast. Let's see whether or not the uh, Punisher is going to jump on the uh, an enemy uh, player here. Finish my quest against that uh, Medivh. Gonna take a moment to be over here. Let my uh, trait kick in. The Kel'Thuzad. 
Probably should be attacking that keep along with the Punisher, but I do want to open it up so that the, uh... Unfortunately, I missed my Q there, but... I can pop my ult in just a second! There we go! And I'm able to hit two targets at the same time. This is going to be tricky. They are all such low health, but... See, they, they can't risk chasing us because they have such low health. Look at the healing I am now doing on my own. And our Abather has been doing such a great job of split soaking. He just took down the top fort. We are three levels ahead. Ugh. Murden is just so good right now. He's so much fun to play. You see the extra range that I can do on my Dwarf Toss now? You guys, I've said it before, I love abilities that give me the capability to either engage or disengage. And the fact that I can do that, Dwarf Toss doesn't only increase the range, but if I hit an enemy hero with it, I reduce the cooldown by 3 seconds. Now, if you combine that with the level 20 uh, upgrade of Avatar, that means you're going to have extra ways to decrease the cooldown of your uh, Dwarf Toss. Does he need me? And they kind of do. Although I think this was kind of risky. I don't think really think there was a reason to do this. I think uh, that was kind of a mistake. We had no reason to really engage there. Look at this Lunara chasing us. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at how they're chasing us. Why did this tracer come down here? Oh, to kill, kill the Lunara. Okay. Gonna go for Unstoppable Force, and now I can pop my ult here to try and help myself have a bit more extra survivability. Like, let's just get out of here, Tracer. Come on. Tracer, let's go. I did pop my ult for that, but I felt like there was no reason to engage there. We were just feeding them kills, giving them an opportunity to get back into the game. Gonna hearth back to get full mana. Fortune Answer said our Apathur's doing a really good job. Ah, didn't get the buffed up Locust, but he's still taking advantage of the Locust for the split soaking. So, you know, got five kills. So you're not about necessarily about uh, getting top damage. I mean, I suppose you could try, but that's not what Murden is meant for. He's obviously a warrior. His main job is to tank for his team. But the fact that he can be able to tank, take a lot of damage, as well as do crit damage is just so good. And the enemy team is now uh, soaking because they realized... Hmm, maybe we should soak and try and get to level 20 since they have 20 and we don't. So I can understand them doing that. Finish that off. So now that's going to push bottom lane. They are still up here in the, in the mid lane. So they're going to have to come down here and deal with this. We might cut them off here, actually. Because we should push with this. I'm going to stay over, go over here and there we go. All stunned for days. Man, there is so much crowd control with both uh, Muradin and Anubarak. Just so much great crowd control. Get that sippy cup, have him start working on the keep. There we go. Here we go, pierced him. With my storm bolts. Stunned him again, and down he goes. 
Gonna go down here, try and stun the Kilthas up, which I do. And oh, he got in before he could get back. And I can jump over the core, continue to attack the core. And yeah, GG. You see what I mean about how good Muradin it feels now? I felt so confident in my tankiness as well as my damage. Just that passive crit damage. Hey, there we go. Tanked a bit more than the, uh... Yep, GG. Than the, uh, Anubrak there. But he just feels so much better now. The fact that he has, uh, some of those Stormbolt talents now built into his kit as a quest. So that if you're able to land those well, you can get rewarded by being able to have... The pierce uh, next additional target plus have the battle momentum and then add the other battle momentum abilities in there with other with others such as with um the dwarf toss extra range at 16 so i hope you guys can see what i'm talking about here with this build just it's it's such a great combo i feel i feel it just feels that way third wind at level one uh thunderburn give him the axe avatar bronze beard rage dwarf launch an unstoppable force you see how like if you are if you have a team with all these slows roots and stuns and keep in mind you have your own slows and stuns built into your kit and then you get bronze with your rage to be able to add more crit damage along with this and then being able to land your dwarf toss uh if you play aggressive against enemy opponents that so you can be able to reduce this cooldown and then have it reduce this cooldown even more with this it's just it feels so good that you can be able to go in there with lots of health, take a lot while do some crit damage to not necessarily uh, do lots of damage, lots of damage, but enough damage to kind of make them go, oh, maybe I should turn around and run away. So he feels good enough to be able to trade with uh, various different heroes. It just feels real great to play Muradin right now. I really enjoy playing him. I didn't really enjoy playing the previous version, but this new reworked version... Oh, mwah, so good. Just love playing this new version of Muradin. So great. Up next, we're going to be... <laughs> we're going to be playing one of my favorite characters. The Murky himself, Sir Markelot. Murky, one of the most polarizing characters in the game because he's so adorable and cute, but no one ever really wants him, even though at times he can be really good. And he can be such a nuisance to the enemy team. We'll talk more on that when we come back. Stay tuned.